CTW Automation here, and we wanted to do a walkthrough of the new software, show you some of the directions we've gone, some things we've added, how to get the most out of it. But basically, this is going to be an, an overall view, and in the near future, we'll do uh, more defined and specific parts of the software so everybody can learn and follow along and get out of it more for their testing and get more data so they can hopefully make better decisions on their dampers but this is the new version that we just released and you can see it is 20.8.281558 now this just means something to us but this is basically the year 2020 August 28th so just if you ever wonder what those numbers are that's where they're coming from now the first thing to notice is we've actually changed this a little bit taken some of the things out of file so this is really just the area where you're going to open your data exit different things like that the live is pretty much the same same kind of features under there the live data live control live cycles and again remember you can turn these on and off just by clicking and they just add to this so basically you can keep it minimized and clean if you want or turn them all on up to you over in tools this is all again very much the same your test executor your test builder the things you're using the most in your test data window views are the same except we now have a new graph which we will go over here shortly but you can see it force first average velocity a lot of guys have been requesting that so we put that in and now you can use that as well under preference which is where some of the things used to be under file but it really didn't make sense so the new preference tab is going to be where you're going to be able to decide on colors the order re everything being the same color everything being a different color and then adding and removing colors based on your wishes so that's going to be under preferences this is also where you choose your unit preferences for basically significant figures and then what you're converting from standard to metric and always keep in mind you don't have to convert everything you can use pounds and meters per second uh, I often do that a lot because I understand pounds very well but meters per second for velocity is just a much cleaner way to look at velocities especially when you're working with a linear actuator which I do a lot of so just remember you don't have to do all metric conversions you can do just the ones you want we have another gentleman that likes to do temperature everything in metric except temperature which he leaves in Fahrenheit so good way to do that also under preferences is uh, the unit system where you switch back and forth between US standard and metric your layouts resetting the factory default saving the layout once you get it done backing up your settings once again please do this every three every three to four months back up your settings you might even want to take a copy of your test folder because all those tests you make those are just files now and you want to make a copy keep them off the computer somewhere and then the old restore settings and restart where you load your last backup setting in case everything goes crazy so that's what's under preferences under help we've moved we've got some help videos and then we have uh, check for updates so now check for updates is going to be over here so the next time we announce another version of software you can just run check from updates right here so kind of laid this out a little differently hopefully it makes a little bit more sense if you never go up there it doesn't matter but uh, structurally it's a better way to set it up now over in the test data area we now have two different ways to view data for people that use PVPs all the time we've set this up so that you're just gonna look at your PVPs now you can always go back and look at the individual speeds but basically every time you're on a PVP they'll show up here and they'll be on the screen maybe it's a little cleaner uh, a little easier for people to use easier to delete the entire file as you see here maybe that's a little better 
And then we have the classic way to view where you can load and put things up here like file name and speed and you can have all of these set looking at uh, individual curves you name it you can do any of these things like you have been doing but we had this added this PVP view so that you could people that just use PVPs maybe that works out a little easier for them hopefully that's the goal um, we've expanded and we'll come back here and I'll show you those things we've added some things to the test builder um, the first one rod force multipoint we did a whole video on that it actually came out in the previous version but we haven't pushed that very much um, this is something you use when you are building uh, a test and you have a spring involved right so you instead of doing the typical rod force uh, let's see this one the typical rod force that starts uh, and stops at mid stroke we have the multi-point which you can build up a table let's see here calculate positions so you build up a table of more than one point so that you take a basically a rod force all the way through from bottom dead center to middle to top dead center and you better represent the spring because in many dampers bicycle motorcycles there's a, a spring component internally by doing this we remove the spring constant based on position because obviously a top dead center there's going to be a much higher rod force than at the bottom and we try to compensate for that so that's what you use this rod force multi-point for um, so it's really if you don't have a big spring effect if your force first displacement graph is not rotating so that the right side is higher than the left then you really don't have a big spring component and you can just use the rod force but if you have that spring component, you can use the multi-point. Build your table, set your settle times, and uh, get a, a better way to just look at the damping because you're removing the spring. But like I said, there's a video on that on YouTube already that details that. So we have the rod force, the rod force multi-point, and then the next new thing we have now is the seal drag. So now, rod force multi-point, those are all... Uh, things that we do where we pause let the load cell settle and then we just take a reading the seal drag is designed to move very very slowly through a window so that hopefully you're just trying to measure the the force caused by friction the seals internal to the shock and you're, you're trying to go slow enough that you're not getting damping involved which is still pretty hard to do but uh, it gives you a much better presentation so we've added seal drag so you can run seal drag and and we recommend always doing seal drag first so you would say go let's move that there to where the bar shows up you would do seal drag and you'd pick one or the other rod force or rod force multi-point and that's how you would build your test and of course this would be oh, there's already rod force up there so I'm just gonna delete that and I would take seal drag if I was actually building a test and I would put it up after start recording and before rod force. So that'd be my seal drag. So um, and I've got some test speeds in there that are just uh, you definitely want to keep it slow. Um, small window slow speed the slower you can go the better in your move to speed I have found that one inch per second is even a bit high anything you do to go slow helps reduce the damping that gets built up when it's moving so so now what the seal drag does is it goes close to mid stroke and then proceeds to go very slowly through a, uh, a window from mid stroke so just below mid stroke to just beyond mid stroke and it's going to take all the forces in that window and it is percentage window this is two percent for right now um, and you can change it you can make that a little bigger but it's going to try to take all those forces by moving slow average them out 
and then it's going to go to the other side of the stroke do the same thing and what it does is, is instead of like the rod force adds them both divides by two to create an average the seal drag takes the numbers on each side and subtracts them so that all you're left with is the resultant force so that's what seal drag is and that's what we've added uh, do have people wanting to use that and get a, maybe a better reading on every damper and it just another just another data point maybe you have a, a bent shaft this will show up a bent shaft so there's another feature another way you can get more data on every test and have a better view of your damper so that's where the seal drag comes into play um, some of the things we uh, we added a few back was exporting you can export data that's another thing we'll go through in a future release so that you can see that better but that's the big one seal drag is new now the way that shows up if we come over to our test data I'm gonna expand this so you can see it you can see as always you remember all the fields that you can turn on and off so I've turned on the file name I've turned on RF which just puts the rod force back in and takes it back out I've turned on gas pressure rod diameter rod force and seal drag so that we can see them and you can see this run I didn't have a rod diameter so I don't get gas pressure and I didn't do a seal drag all I did was the rod force so the rod force of this one was 36.1 pounds okay so that's no seal drag no rod diameter in the test just so you could see this one I was obviously testing all of these features and this is what we came up with so the seal drag in this case was 11.9 pounds that was one side minus the other side so basically that damper just to move that at a very slow speed takes 11.9 pounds um, it's a good metric it's a good way to compare damper to damper uh, certainly if you see something that is a large percentage different between two or four shocks something you're going to want to look into uh, because I added a shaft diameter to that constant hopefully everybody is aware of that if you want to add your shaft diameter if I can find yep set rod diameter so we set the rod diameter into the test so that data point comes in that allows the software to give you a estimated gas pressure and we also did in this one a multi-point and I know it's a multi-point gas test because instead of a number it has this so if I click on this now you can see this is that multi-point so we stopped at these three positions and we got this force now this damper has no spring effect in it it's a small shaft it doesn't do anything really different from bottom dead center to top dead center but you can imagine if you do have a spring you're going to get a graph here that shows that spring so it's kind of neat kind of gives you a good view quickly and you still have your old rod force constants and your pressure all in here but you get that just by clicking on that so that's a new feature and that's how you use the multi t multi point that's how you use seal drag now if I reduce and, and go back to here we're back to the test now looking at the graphs I told you we have these force first velocity graphs and let me see if I can get one on the screen uh, that's a very soft one that's so I'm going to take these off to kind of clean this up we're gonna look at that force first average graph now, take all these off we want to show a little hysteresis so you have this standard force first absolute velocity graph now if we go to this force first average velocity you see we only have one line so basically it's taken all along this trace that point and this point and added them up and made an average so it's going to predict or going to project a line splitting the extension and splitting the compression into an average so we've had a lot of people that wanted that um, it's not real it's obviously not real data it's not a real representation of the damper if you have a lot of hyster hysteresis you can definitely fool yourself and but it was a, a large customer request so we wanted to make sure we put it in and just have a disclaimer that could be a problem if you really really want to see it so okay so we've added another few features that uh, basically 
give you a little bit more ability to make it everything the way you would like to see such as line thickness so if you come to a file and you right click you'll notice this is new you can now make any particular line thicker or thinner and you can even set defaults for your line thickness so that you can better show you know whatever particular graph you want to see and now every time you click on another one they'll update to that new line thickness so that is another feature we added in some people want to see that so they can see the lines better so that's one another thing you'll see is a few of these buttons up here we have the zoom tool this is a pan tool which if you click on it you can do crazy things to the graph like that I'm not sure what you'll use it for but it was part of the software package to go ahead and click on the screen and it resets it back to the zoom we have a average tool this one right here so that if you make a box it will try to give you the average of all the data points found inside that box and it will also put a bigger indicator where it uh, mathematically the average of everything is found so you get the data and you get that of anything in this box and this one is a line tool and we gotta refresh the screen so you click on here and you can draw a line on the screen to follow uh, a particular graph to find the slope you see you get start point end point the delta x and y you get the slope which if you are rating springs on the dyno very slowly all you have to do is go to force first displacement and draw a uh, obviously you'll be going left to right and let's see if I get the right tool and you draw perhaps along your spring graph you will get the slope of that spring which the slope at that point would be the rate of the spring so very handy way to rate springs on your dyno and get the rate pretty quickly so those are the tools and the line thickness features we've added and uh, hopefully you find them useful there you go